Governor Kim Reynolds. Thank you. Thank you. I tend to be a little loud anyway. This might be a dangerous place. I think I'll move it down. But uh, Cody, thank you for that nice introduction. Thank you for all that you do on behalf of Republicans up and down the ticket. You have just been an amazing, amazing, amazing. Holy smokes, this is amazing. Thank you to each and every one of you for being here this afternoon. We are on the Keep Iowa Moving Tour, and we are holding rallies just like this all across the state and communities. I think we've been in about 35 now, and we're going to keep doing this straight through the re uh, election. And it's all about keeping our team and our party motivated and energized because this election, and you're going to hear it from every speaker, is all about turnout. Turnout, turnout, turnout. If we turn out, then we keep this state and this country moving in the right direction. If we become complacent and stay home, we are not going to get the results that we're, we want. We're going to see this economy come to a screeching halt, and we're going to see this state and this country go backwards. So thanks for being here and being a part of it. I appreciate it so much. Um, you know, it's an amazing honor to serve as the 43rd governor of this great state, and I like to say that Iowa is a state that's getting things done, and it's the Republican team that's getting things done. It is a team effort from Washington, D.C., all the way down to the local level. We are, we are providing results. This team is cutting taxes, uh, helping hardworking Iowans, families, and small businesses like the fine keep more of their hard-earned money. We're growing jobs and wages and expanding opportunities in every single corner of this state. We are investing in our greatest asset, our young people. Historic investment in K-12 education. We love kids and we love teachers. We do not hate them. No matter what you hear, it's not true. And here's one more thing. We are not going to touch your diapers. They are safe. They are safe today, they are safe tomorrow, and they are safe in the future. When you don't have any ideas or a vision, and you want to take the state backwards, and you got to work every day to turn all of the positive state things that are happening in this state into a negative, then you start using scare tactics. And that's all they have left. So I want you to know these are promises that we have made to public employees that have counted on that in their retirement I'm counting on it, for heaven's sakes. Colleagues that I worked with in local government for years, uh, Kevin and I's daughter is an educator. She's been teaching about five years. She's counting on it. So please, if you're talking to somebody, you're having coffee, you're at church, and you hear somebody say those dang Republicans are going to take your eyebrows, it's not true. Okay? Okay? Yeah. <laughs> And we're also doing what, what Trudy was talking about. We're, we're helping Iowans get the skills to fill the jobs that are available. 66,000 jobs daily on an average open in communities all across this state. And that's tremendous opportunities for Iowans. So we're going to work with Iowans and young people and help them see that there's many paths to a great career. That might be an apprenticeship, a certification, two-year, four-year, whatever that may be. But it's about building relationships, reskilling Iowans, and matching them up with the great employers that we have in communities all across this state. We are also worked hard this last legislative session to provide solutions to Iowa's health care needs. Proud of what we've been able to do with that, and we're going to continue to work on that and work with uh, our congressional delegation as well. So you know what? Iowa is moving forward. we got a lot of positive things happening. So the last thing we want to do is stop, reverse course, and go backwards. And that's what my opponent wants to do. He wants to take us back to the days of the Clover administration. And I don't know if you all remember, because sometimes we get pretty comfortable about where we're at. So let me remind you, look, people were struggling to find a job. Unemployment was high. The budget was a mess, massive spending. And when they spent all of your money, and they'd overspent, they pulled out the credit card, they borrowed $700 million that Iowans are still paying back to the tune of $55 million a year for the next 20 years. <coughs> Folks, that's not what we want to go back to, right? Oh, no. Right. Let's build on the success that we've seen. And we've been recognized for the positive things that are happening in the state. Number one state in the country. Yay! That's about you. That's about Iowa. That's about work ethic, values, people like the vibe, making a difference. 
meeting across the state. Second lowest cost of doing business, second lowest unemployment, third best managed state. We're seeing wages increase, taxes are going down. Here's something he doesn't like to talk about either. Our budget is balanced, the cash reserves are full, and we have a $127 million surplus. That's a state that's working. That's because the economy is growing. So, we have a great story to tell, a lot to be proud of, but here's the other thing about this team that we have up here. We are just getting started. So, we got a lot to do. We're so excited about the opportunities that exist within the state, and that's where each of you come in. We need you out there working hard, talking to your neighbors, your families, friends at church. You know, it, it, tell them how important this election is. Tell them to get to the polls. Tell them to vote. Uh, and help us keep Iowa moving in the right direction. So, listen, thank you for being here. Not only do I have that team, but look who else is traveling with me today. Ed Polak, look at this. Does it get any better than this? My gosh, the voice of the Iowa Hawkeyes. He, he traveled all over with Senator Ernst, and I said, hey, half the time they think I'm Joni. Can I get you to come travel with me? So, anyway, thank you so much. I really, really Escort you through Hawkeye country. All right. I can't think of a better person to do that, so thank you. One last person I have to thank, and then we're going to let the other one speak. But uh, nobody does this alone, and every one of us standing up here would say that you can't do it without the support of your family. So I'm so proud to have the first dude traveling on the RV at the Keep Iowa Moving Tour, and uh, I just am so blessed to have his support and encouragement, and you can't do it without him. So, Kevin, thank you. Thank you. team is um, your lieutenant governor and I tell you do I have the best lieutenant governor in the country yes I do we are rocking and rolling and I am so blessed to have Adam Greg serving uh, as a partner in this administration and uh, serving as my lieutenant governor Adam thank you thank you governor it's an honor to be here with you today it's an honor to serve you in the role of lieutenant governor and I got to say it's an honor to serve every day side by side with governor Kim Reynolds I'm gonna be very brief today because you've already heard all the great things that are going on in this state. Number one state in the nation, second lowest unemployment in the nation, a budget that's balanced, taxes that are going down. You could go on all day long. But here's what you need to know. Two things you need to know. First of all, all that opportunity and prosperity and success doesn't just happen on its own. It takes leadership. It takes strong leadership at the top, the kind of leadership that Kim Reynolds has provided during her time as lieutenant governor and now as governor. And the second thing you need to know, all that opportunity, all that prosperity, all that success, it's on the ballot on November 6th. It's on the ballot. Now, when you get that ballot, you're not going to see the words tax cuts with an oval next to it. You're not going to see the words but balanced budget with an oval next to it. You're not going to see uh, job training or education or mental health reform with an oval. But let me assure you, it's on the ballot, because you will see the names Kim Reynolds and Adam Gregg. You will see the names of all these great Republican candidates on the ballot as well. So we're asking you to fill in those ovals. We're asking for your vote. We're asking for your support. And, uh, you know, these next six days are critical. These next six days are going to decide the future of our state. So as the governor said, please take these six days to use this opportunity to make those extra phone calls, Knock those extra doors, place those last yard signs, do whatever it takes to get the vote out, and it'll make a big, big difference. So with that, let me just say thank you for being here. Thank you for all you do to make this state great. But most of all, sincerely, thank you for giving us this incredible opportunity to serve you. Thank you very much. Now I get the real treat of introducing somebody who is really a living legend in the state of Iowa. You don't know yet if I'm introducing Podolak or if I'm introducing Grasser. <laughs> but you know, this is somebody who served as a <coughs> and this is somebody who you never thought, could the respect or esteem for this man go up any higher than it was? But you know what? Over the course of the past two or three months, I think it has gone up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh dear. First
first of all, I got to tell you about Trudy. In, in 1980, she was my county chairman. <laughs> several times since then, but... Uh, by the way, if I said, uh, like the lieutenant governor, I'm just going to make this short on the senator, you wouldn't believe it anyway. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank all of you uh, uh, for giving me the privilege of representing you in the United States Senate. I know after September you probably think I'd be crazy if I said I enjoyed my work. <laughs> I enjoy it now more than I ever have before. <laughs> slogan, where'd she get it? He said, okay, don't you realize K-I-M is her first name? So, I'm, I'm 85, but I didn't know I was that slow. <laughs> anyway, she ends it, keep Iowa moving, and then she says, we don't want to go backwards. Now, she touched on this just a little bit. Let me kind of fill in, because uh, when I got started in politics, most of these people up here, except for Ed, uh, Podolak, they were all in their diapers when I got started. And, and, he, and he was playing football at Iowa when I was elected to the Iowa legislature, so you know how long ago that was. Uh, anyway, uh, keep Iowa moving, and then she made reference to the fact that uh, we don't want to go backwards. Okay, I want to remind you then, 12 years that we had Democrat governors in between uh, the Branstead uh, Reynolds and the previous Branstead administration, they left a $900 million hole. And the trust funds were, and rainy day funds were busted. So uh, she and Governor Branstead get elected, and it isn't long until they got us out of that hole. It's pretty significant that when you've got people that believe in fiscal responsibility, and then if you watch these debates, you saw a candidate in the other political party that the answer to everything was spending more money and where are you going to get the money? And uh, he didn't have an answer where he's going to get the money. Uh, but the governor said, uh, you, 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 oh, you, you got to raise taxes if you're going to do that. Uh, and we aren't going to raise taxes if I'm reelected, she said. And we don't print money like the federal government. <laughs> and, and, they, and they have this uh, law that we ought to have with the federal government that you don't spend more than 99% of the money you take in. That's a pretty good law to have, right? Yeah. Uh, so we've got a good thing going from a fiscal responsibility in their audit. If I had enough time, I could tell you 10 other reasons for programs, but you heard most of them from these other speakers. So I like to say there's something personal about her and her interest in Iowa and what she showed it as a state senator and a lieutenant governor and a, uh, and a uh, governor uh, uh, traveling the state as she does, um, going to every county every year and doing that every year, that's pretty important because somebody said to me one time, well, you mean you go to every county every term? No, I go to every county every year for 38 years in a row. And, and, uh, say this, she's got to know, being lieutenant governor and governor, a lot a lot about Polk County. Her opponent knows a lot about Polk County, but she knows everything about the other 98 counties in this state. And uh, when you started out, as she did, working her way up, and, uh, and uh, being a uh, mother, grandmother, and county treasurer and working at high V's and all that, I'll bet everybody in this room has had some jobs like that. So you know what it is. She wasn't born with a silver spoon in her mouth, and to me that's pretty significant. <laughs> she ended up then being not only governor, but the first female governor in this state. how important 
wherever it is. You've got, you, most of you are looking to the future. And most of you, if you're under 50 or 60 years of age, you got a lot bigger future than I got at age 85. <laughs> uh, you you want to make sure that she's reelected to make sure you got that good future. So make sure you work hard for her. And I'm sure glad she's our governor. And I want to see that she continues to be our governor. Now I have the privilege of introducing a colleague of mine, a Republican colleague of mine. <laughs> For 30 years, we had a, I had a Democrat colleague, and can I tell you from personal experience, it really is nice to have a Republican <laughs> Can we hear it one more time for Senator Rossi? Mentor, but a hero of mine. Yay! So thank you, and thank you all so much. This is a packed house, standing room only. Thank you to the folks here at the Vine for allowing us to come in and, and share some thoughts and, and inspiration for you right before the election day next Tuesday. I am so proud to be on the trail today and tomorrow and many other days in the next six days with my dear friend and colleague uh, Kim Reynolds. Um, you know, I heard, I heard it expressed a while back that uh, many of us adore uh, Governor Brandstad. Uh, he was a wonderful governor for the state of Iowa. And somebody said, you know, Governor Brandstad was a really great politician. And I agree, he was a really great politician. But then they said, Kim Reynolds is a great governor. Yeah. And you can tell that, and Senator Grassley has said this many times over, just how much Kim cares about this state. And I agree wholeheartedly. I think all of us up here, everybody here on the Republican ticket, we are doing this. We are engaging in these, in these battles and these discussions every day because we love the great state of Iowa. And making up that great state of Iowa is the people of Iowa. And we love you so much that we want to step out of our comfort zones and get out there and do the right thing for all of us. Kim cares. You feel that, you see that every day in her interactions with Iowans. Now, U.S. News Report <coughs> ranked Iowa as the number one state in the nation. And that is so, uh, so amazing to me. I just love that, that they recognize what all of us already know. Um, every day that I walk into the United States Capitol, I thank God that I'm an Iowan. And regardless of what U.S. News and World Report says, I always think that Iowa is the number one state in the nation. Kim, Kim feels this way every single day as well. But when he was asked, Kim's opponent stated he did not think that Iowa was the best state in the nation. Really, Fred Hubble? Really? Okay, so I don't care what other folks say. I'm proud to be an Iowan. I'm proud to be from here. And we've got the best folks in the United States. We believe that. Why doesn't Fred Hubble? up here a lot of local and state folks that are running for elected office but you know what's really important is that we have that collaboration moving on to the federal government as well so you can see between the state and the federal government we've worked a lot of really wonderful initiatives together and you know what it makes a difference when you're pulling in the same direction and that's what we've had with Kim and with Adam and their whole team here at the state level we're making things happen the economy here in Iowa is strong and that's because Kim has shown the leadership she has made those decisions to keep Iowa moving forward so I'm going to give you two examples of the great work that Kim has done that has been reflected in national policy not just policy here at the state 
the national policy because she engages with our administration, the president, the vice president, USDA Secretary Sonny Perdue. She speaks with all of them and not just on the phone, folks. She talked to them face to face about issues that are important to Iowans. So number one, our great trade policies, getting Iowa's goods out to the world, whether in manufacturing or agriculture. Kim is at the forefront of that. We've seen great success with South Korea, European Union, United States, Mexico, Canada agreement that we just passed. Um, and we've got many, many others, but they're listening to leaders like Kim. She is speaking to them about that, making sure that Iowa stays in their minds. Now, number two, we have a great biofuels industry here in Iowa, right? Yeah. So who's talking about it? Kim Reynolds, right here. So the president just recently announced E15 year round. E15 year round, and that's good for Iowa's farmers. So it's not just the work that Chuck and I are doing at the federal uh, level, engaging with the administration. It's also <coughs> great leaders like Kim Reynolds. So I thank you all so much for coming out today and being with us, supporting Kim. But we need you to vote. If you don't go vote, it's, it's all for nothing, right? So we need you to vote. We need you to get out the vote. And talking about collaboration now between the state and the federal level, um, we have another partner with us today on the trail as well that is seeking federal elected office in this district. And it is my great honor and privilege to introduce to you someone that I've known for a number of years now. I am inspired by him. Uh, we both served our country in uniform. And it is my pleasure to introduce to you our Republican candidate for the second district, Dr. Chris Peters. Thanks. Yeah! in medical school, so it takes a little bit to get used to the microphone. Hold on. Just um, so I'm running against, well, that, should we name his name? I guess we will. Uh, Dave Lobsack is your current representative. Sorry. Thank you for that. We should, we should, we should put that A deep guttural moan of disgust. I was just going to say that was what that was. Now, yes. So, Mr. Lobsack is a, is a pretty nice fella. Is it too bad? What do I need to do? Move further over? I don't want to stand in front of anybody. Uh, but I don't think we need to pay in a congressional salary for somebody just to be a nice fella. And I think you deserve better representation. Mr. Lobsack has been in office 12 years, almost 12 years now, and he doesn't have any real seniority even with his own party. Now, medical school for us, four years to become, become physicians, right? I assume you did a four year program too. Yeah, so I can't imagine that, that being an effective congressman has a steeper learning curve than becoming a physician. And yet we got a good example of a wonderful senator right here who's been in for four years and I think has distinguished herself remarkably. I think we should expect something similar from our elected House of Representatives members. So that's why I'm running. One of the reasons I'm running to replace him, I just see it as somebody that doesn't really have any good ideas bringing, that he brings forward. Most of the good ideas he does come forward with are ones that he's taken from me, by the way. Uh, and I'm glad that he's teachable. I just think the people that we elect should be able to come up with their own ideas. Number one issue in the district when we talk about uh, talk to voters has been health care costs. And I agree with them. I think it's the number one issue that our, our country faces. It's one that we can fix. At the state level, you are addressing some things, but we need some help at the federal level. I'd like there to be another physician at the table advocating for you as opposed to the medical industry. I've been a physician for nearly 30 years, and I think having someone else who's going to, again, speak and be a patient advocate rather than an advocate for the medical device industry. Another issue, veteran, veteran, any other veterans up here? Veteran also. Uh, Mr. Lomsack talks a lot about how he cares about veterans, and I believe he's sincere in that. But as an actual veteran and as physicians who took care of veterans during active duty, who actually took care of them, I think we have a lot more to say on the subject than, than Mr. Lomsack does. And veterans' care has not been ideal, especially here in the 2nd District, and Mr. Lomsack is not advocating for any ideas that really make a lot of sense to me. So I think that's something else we need to bring forward. At the, at the federal level to, to address our veterans' needs. <coughs> people voted, a bunch of people voted early already, right? Yes. So I want you to go back to the polls. I, I don't want you to vote twice. We're not Democrats. 
<laughs> but I do want you to take somebody else who hasn't voted. So put somebody in the minivan, put somebody in the back seat of your car, put them on your scooter, bicycle, whatever it is. Talk to people, your family, family, friends, neighbors, people you go to church with, people you work with, anybody that hasn't voted, you think may not vote, and see if you can't get them to polls and vote. So ultimately this comes down to turnout. Six days, we really depend upon you. 